Welcome to Fearless Podcast. I'm Mike. And this is Orlando. And this is the Ronnie Lott episode number 42. All right. Do you know who Ronnie Lott was? No, is it the one they made the, the movie about? <laughs> what? I don't know. Was there like a movie about no, like a... He was, he was somebody who played for the 49ers. Oh, you know. Back know in the 80s and 90s. And he hit people hard. So he was like a cornerback, a free safety. And he also played for other teams. But man... He just came at people. Right. And so this episode. It's coming at you. I, I, I don't know if it's coming at you, but <laughs> we're going to hit hard. How are going to make this relevant? <laughs> make it relevant, but we're going to hit it hard as far as staying motivated in the grind. That's what this episode is about. It's good stuff. Because, you know, reselling is it can be a grind. Mm. I don't want to say is a grind. I don't think it's always a grind, but there are those moments where it's a grind. Yeah. I think, I think so. Officially, the title you've titled this "Staying Motivated in the Grind." Correct. Okay, good. I like that. I think that's a good title. I think that's a good um, focus for this episode. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that. Uh, but I also There's something happened with here. my uh, with with a quote that I I, I like to kind of live by is uh, and there's there's many of them. So this is the paraphrase of hundreds of different versions of this, but something to the effect of um, "You don't need motivation; you need discipline." Like motivation comes and goes. You can't always stay motivated, but you can be disciplined in the grind. I, I agree. I agree. No, I, in the sense that discipline safeguards you when the motivation goes away. Yeah. Well, and, and because, you know, oftentimes I think, and, and maybe it's good to define our terms. Sometimes we think of motivation as just like a positive emotional feeling towards something. Whereas I think in reselling, you've got one discipline, right? Which is important. But I think, I think there's a, a long-term motivation that's easy to forget about, which is the, why are you doing this in the first place? Right. And so it's not just that like immediate, you wake up and you're like, yes, I want to list today. I'm so motivated, but it's kind of like, all right, I'm doing this thing. I'm motivated. Even though I might I not actually feel wake good. up like that. Do you? Like I'm going to list all day today. No, I don't. I don't. Sorry. We, we should, we should make a, we should make a video of you. Like the alarm clock goes off and you just jump up and you're like, it's time to lose. And you're going crazy. Like, like have you Sparta seen, and like I'm kicking clothes into a pit that I just listed. You're kicking a mannequin down. <laughs> there like, you go. It's like that. There's a funny YouTube video that went around years ago. It was something like, I love Mondays. And the guy's like running around. He's like, it's Monday. I, I think I remember that. I love going to work. Work's amazing. I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy. Okay. So, but we're not renaming this episode, right? I mean, I, I will agree with you. Like discipline is... Is huge. Staying motivated in the grind. But it's so much. Parentheses, e- discipline. Yeah, but you know what? It's so much easier to, to do something if you're motivated than if you're disciplined about it. Disagree. Really? Yep. Okay, let's get full okay. for 30 seconds. Okay. If if you wake up every single morning and you're, you're like, I'm going to get up and I'm going to take my dog for a walk every morning. And you make that a promise and you get up and you do it for two months straight. You might wake up one morning and you're so tired and you just want to lay in bed, but you're like, you know what? I'm disciplined. I'm getting up and I'm walking my dog three blocks and then I'm coming home every morning. You're going to do it. Now, if it's just based on motivation, two weeks in, you're going to be done. But what if you love doing it? You'll just keep doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. Yeah, but I don't think, I mean, I think there's certain things in life that you can love and do, but I think all of the best things in life hustling hard. I mean, it's part of who we are and we love to do it to an extent, but I think you have to be disciplined in it. I just, I do. I, I think because so. you're not always going to be, because how many times have we talked? I mean, the, you might the, be right. The reason, well, we're having this episode, staying motivated in the grind proves that <coughs> there is a grind and you have to be, it's not always just like rainbows. I agree. I will say when you're full time, it's more of a grind than when you're part time. But you would say it's still a part. It's still a grind when you're part time. Yeah, I think it might just like proportionately be more of a grind. Yeah, I, if you're if you're full time, I do miss like I do miss the moments where I didn't like stress. Do you know what I mean? Like I already had a consistent paycheck coming. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? I do. Yeah. So, but at the same time, you know, one of the things I did before I went to full time was I made sure I had enough, you know, emergency fund that if anything were to happen, I wouldn't stress off of it. So I didn't necessarily feel that pressure. That makes sense? Yeah. So kind of like, you know, anyways, 
I could, I could get into our giveaway from a couple of weeks ago, but you know, it's one of those things you always want to make sure you have some kind of safety net that is not a credit card uh, when you do reselling. Yeah. I mean, even I mentioned last episode about my car breaking down, right? Um, one of the things Dave's, we're not a Dave Ramsey podcast, right? So I've, I feel like we were quoting him a lot, but one of the things he will say is like, that's not an emergency. Like when your car that's breaks so down, it's yeah. not an emergency. When your refrigerator goes out, that's not like that stuff happens. Like you need to be prepared for that. So, um, same thing with reselling. You're right. Like when sales are slow in Jan- in June, it's not an emergency. You know what I mean? When, uh, you know, Amazon has way more sales during Q4 than eBay. That wasn't an emergency. Like that's the norm. Yep. And, and, and even, even there, there may be statistical anomalies where it's like this month I didn't sell as much as I'm normally like project to sell. Um, but even that shouldn't be an emergency. You should always, you should always be budgeting and preparing for the worst so that when the best happens, you can keep budgeting more for the worst so that when the worst does happen, it's not a big deal. It doesn't affect you at all. Agreed. All right. That's, that's a good way of looking at things. Yeah. It's being motivated. We probably need a whole episode about like what to do when things go bad. You know what we should do? We should have like an occasional episode where we do like and, and there's other podcasts that do similar stuff, but where we do actual kind of like reviews and do the the highlights of like some of the, the like a reaction podcast. Yeah, not just reaction though, but like a review of like okay, so you mentioned the 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 filling your bucket book last podcast, right? Okay, agree. Where we just like spend a half hour and talk about like the the key takeaways from that 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 as in resale, how can you and and come at it from a resale perspective, like because a lot of those things are like meant for like if you're a manager of a corporation, okay, well, okay. it's different when you're a reseller, right? So like we can read these books and then kind of give some here are our five or ten takeaways from the perspective of a reseller. You know what? It would be awesome to do that. We just got to be in, in a different financial place to do that. Hmm. I mean, maybe down the road, who knows? You know, maybe when we get a certain amount of subscribers and, and followers on Instagram, we'll be able to do something like that. I think it would be awesome. That'd be tons of fun. Let us know in the comments below. Would that be something you're interested in? So, or any books you suggest too? That'd be awesome. To yeah. Hear. What are What are some of the things that that have been beneficial for you as a reseller? Uh, maybe that aren't even reselling related books, but things you've been able to incorporate in your incorporate into your life. Like I don't know, the art of war, right? Like how have you been able to incorporate that into? <laughs> The art of war of all books. It's good stuff, man. No, it's true. It does relate to reselling. Yeah. But that's for another podcast. That's for that art of war uh, reselling edition. That's yeah. what we're just going to call it. It'll be like the name of the book, reselling. Reselling review. There you go. There you go. It would it'd be great. Okay. Let's get back to our topic here. So we're talking about staying motivated in the grind. All right. So do you find, you know, that there's a pattern to reselling? Like from when you first start to when you're kind of, you know, you've done it for a little while and then. When you eventually you've been doing it for a long while. Do you think things change? So you mean like a like a natural progression yeah. of of attitude? Um yeah, I think so. I, I, I do remember like my first several garage sales and going into thrift stores and just feeling like extreme excitement, but also like um being feeling a little lost at times, like not knowing what was what yeah. and what's worthwhile, being a little naive, which sometimes worked out for my benefit. To now it's like Sometimes I'm like, I got to go to garage sales or I better go to a thrift store and I walk in and I know what to look for now. Um, the excitement isn't quite as there, but I'm able to get in and out quicker and I'm not wasting as much money. So like I, there was a weird progression of like in the beginning, maybe a little bit more excitement and then not as much knowledge. So you, I wasted more time and money. And now there's maybe not as much like thrill, but I'm not wasting as much time and money. So it's kind of a trade off there. No, I, it's funny. You know, one of our friends that we had just talked about that just started listening to our podcast. And uh, it's funny because we don't share within our own community that we have a podcast. Mm. Right. And it's funny when people come across our podcast. Yeah. Right. It's just, it's kind of, it gets a little awkward for a little bit. But, uh, you know, he's like super motivated, like hit the garage sale today. And, and you're probably listening. So you know who you are. You know, he's like texting me about like, Hey, there's all these rain spooners I just picked up. I picked this up. I want to have a hundred listings by the end of the week. And I go, oh, I remember that newlywed phase of reselling, right? Where it's like every day, you you know, you're wide eyed and you're like, oh, I love this. Like I'm going to build an empire and things are going to be good. And not saying that's not true, but it's, uh, I don't know. It's kind of weird. It's kind of like, um, it's like you can only be infatuated with someone for so long. Right. 
right? <laughs> it's gonna be a it's gonna be a dating podcast, right? But oh, <laughs> reselling edition, yeah. dating advice, reselling. <laughs> but edition. the last thing you want to be is continually infatuated because eventually, like a real love, a real passion through the realness has to set in. Yeah, and actually, that kind of reminds me of of another quick quote. It was like a, a, a I'm like ninety nine percent sure it was C.S. Lewis who made a comment that like you can. You love somebody at first with like that, like you said, infatuation that's almost extreme. But you need the infatuation. You need it to to, to get that attraction to, to that yeah, person. Yeah, you need the attraction. You need the infatuation to get to know them and to really understand. But you can't keep up with that. And, and he used the analogy of like if you were always in that state of like the butterflies, like your first date type thing, nobody would be productive. Everybody would just be like useless human beings, Correct. right? And it makes sense because you wouldn't get anything done because you'd always be like. Oh, my goodness and you're so excited like like you know. i would i would love to see mike do that reaction all over again it's okay it's but, well it's, it's the internet they could just hit rewind there you somebody's go. gonna make a meme out of it I there bet. you go but i think it's the same thing with recently you go through this pattern like you're like every day like can't wait to hit the thrift store i can't hit wait to hit the garage sale and then there's that lull mm. right there's like those slow weeks right and you experience some of that yep right ebay hooked you in you say right yep. and then yep. And have you been in that low for a little bit, you think, or you think you're on the other side? Um, you know, it's it's weird. Like there's definitely been a lull, but it's it's been it's consistent and it worries me that it is very consistent when we're posting regularly, we're getting sales regularly. And it's that's nothing new. Everybody knows about that algorithm. And I'm not planning on leaving eBay anytime soon, but I almost feel like it's set up to force you to keep adding more and more to your store. I just wonder how long that's been. Like so funny you say that because actually I was having this conversation with Selquick Shipquick uh, when I was over thrifting with them uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I had mentioned that like there was a time when I could go two weeks on eBay and not do anything and would have consistent sales. Where now it's like if I go like I can maybe go a day, but if I go like two days, I already see a drop. Mm. Like you constantly have to be you know being active. But it, it's one of those where I think that's what separates those that, you know, kind of it's like a passing, you know, kind of, hey, this was cool. It's kind of like, um, and, and not, not to say anything negative about Gary Vee's trash talk. I think it was awesome and it motivated a lot of people. But I wonder how many of those people that were initially motivated back in the fall are still motivated now. Right. Yep. And we talked about that. We talked about not feeling like shows like that are really creating more competition uh, because we have, we have an incredible listener base that, that listen to our podcast. And these are the people who are, I mean, I'm not even going to call them competition because they're, they're, you know, I don't want to think about it like that, but, but these are the real hustlers, right? These are the mm -hmm. people out there working hard. And it's, it's so, as far as the pop population goes, it's, it's such a few amount, like it, it, it's a small population of people who are willing to put in that work. Right. Like a lot of people are willing to try momentarily for a little bit. And I think part of it is they're going off of just motivation, just emotion. Maybe I should define that better, but like just the emotional excitement and they lose that discipline and they don't have the long term motivation of this is the lifestyle or life that I want. And I see that reselling <clears throat> is a tool and an avenue to get me there. So, again, if you're the reason we're sharing this is if you're brand new. Like, let's say you, you know, because we have a lot of listeners that did come over from, you know, they watch Trash Talk and we kind of, you know, went back and forth with, with them on Instagram on those posts. And then they listen to our podcast. And now some of you are new and it's been a few months and kind of this low. Yeah. Like you're like, what, you know, mug life like was supposed to make me tons of money and it's not making me tons of money. Yep. Right. I'm not making, you know, that amount. And. I want to tell you guys, like, that's part of the pattern of reselling. Like, it's not going to be like that. Like, it, it's, you know, you will have the highs of Q4. But, man, I could I personally could not function the way I did in Q4. Yeah, I mean, that's not sustainable either. Like, like you, you're you going to have times when things are just going great, but you're going to have to be hustling so hard to keep that going that you're going to need breaks throughout the year. And so I think... Part of it is just how do you use the slower times either of the year or just in your own emotional motivation? If you're not feeling listing for a week because of life events, what do you do with that? How do you how do you still move forward towards your goals without completely giving up reselling? No, 100 percent. And that's what that's what the point of this podcast is, you know. So I want to share some tips, but 
I, I want to talk about, you know, part of it, it is discipline. Like, you got to work through those lows. Like, you got to understand that's what happens in reselling. And, you know, there are some people that will argue and say, no, you know, I have a private label, which if you do private label, like, you're going to do really well. But even with private label, there are people that will hijack your listing or, you know, Amazon will put some kind of infringement or Amazon becomes your competition. So there is... I think I don't think there is a win-win like where you're constantly on this high all the time. Yeah. Right now, I think right now with the economy doing really well, I think that's more possible. But yeah. eventually that's going to change. What is it Gary V made a comment like if you're not winning right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> you, you shouldn't be in this business. Something yeah. to that effect. And I I agree. I, I think you know, I think that's a little you know, obviously, it's it's a statement. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, Is that sorry. what it meant to you? It's a, it's a statement that's supposed to get a reaction. Right. Right. But I think I think there's some truth to that. But also, you know, reselling sometimes takes a little bit time to win. Yeah. Yeah. It's the it's that that slow dime and the slow build and 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 it's very possible that. Um, that eBay does when you very first start and you first get an account and you first sell things that they're trying to hook people in and they're, they're, they're promoting your listings for you without you having to pay anything. You know, that type of a, they're putting you up further on the the pages and helping you get sales, um, which they're not going to do if you're, you're, li- you're sourcing items that are terrible. You're still going to have to source decent items. No, I agree. Um, but you know, even if that's the case and then after that you have to really work and build, I think, I think as you continue and you continue and you discipline yourself and you keep working, you keep moving step by step by step f- along the way, you get to those magic numbers, 500, 1,000, 2,000 in your store, and it's going to be impossible for you not selling items, right? People are going to be looking mm-hmm. stuff up. You're going to get to that place where it. I don't want to call it passive income because I don't feel like you ever really get to passive income, but it is going to require less work, but you're going to have to upfront put in the work. Well, that's what I mean when working through the lows. You know, it's part of that. You know, I think about June. So I can't tell you how many times in June things are slow on eBay. And I take that time to list like crazy because I know that come September, like I'm going to be glad that I listed, you know, two, three hundred items in June because eventually I'm going to make those sales. But it's it's part of that. You know, you got to work through those lows, like especially, you know, when it comes to getting ready for the different seasons, or maybe you're, you know, you're in this opportunity that you're so like, you've talked about, you're so busy and it's like, man, you know, there, I'm guessing there were times you're really discouraged about reselling. Well, you still got to understand that, like, you got to make it happen. It's kind of a, well, I had, Oh, this is what I was watching. I, I saw Thriftzilla. So Thriftzilla, you know, he's a part-time guy on, on Instagram. He's one of our first hustle of the week. Mm-hmm. He might've been our first hustle of the week. Yeah, maybe. So, he had talked about how he buys things on auction or on eBay because he doesn't have time to go out to thrift stores or go to garage sales. Mm. And I go, okay, so he's working through that low. Like he's making it happen. So it's not that, you know, if you're new, it's not that reselling was something that was like a dream that was sold to you. And maybe it was sold to you, but there's more to it. It's not, it's not like every Saturday garage sale, like you're going to have major hauls. Like, the hauls I've had, you know, the last three weeks, you got to look at back the IG stories. They're not up. But if I could, from two months ago where Mike and I were going out there and there was like nothing. Mm. You remember those days? Um, unfortunately, I do. Yeah. Right. And, and you know, you, I remember one day I only got like five snapback hats and that's it. I remember one day I don't think I even got anything. Yeah. One day. Yeah. I know 100% for sure that happened a couple of times this year. Uh, and I walked in the door one time and I said, I didn't bring anything home. And my wife said, good. And I said, what do you mean? She goes, I'm just glad you didn't feel like you had to buy junk just to bring something home. Agreed. And I was like, wow. Agreed. Thanks now, for that encouragement. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? At least at least you're on her good side. Yeah. Good yeah, yeah. So I was, but you know, it doesn't hurt to also remember the highs, right? Well, what would you say are some of the highlights before things got slow? You know, I mean, part of it is, even when we talked about like just rolling out of bed in the morning early to go garage sales, right? Okay. It can be hard when it's cold outside and still dark, but then remembering that time that I found that, uh, that apple hat 
for 50 cents yep. or the, the the time when when there's all those board games that I like or the time you know you you just remember the the good garage sales and how many times you do well and even if you don't do well like my wife and I have built in things that we kind of do so where you know if we go out to to garage sales together we always go to Denny's afterwards right and so it's it's remembering like the positives of of doing what we're doing so the, the big finds or even if it's not a big find uh just you know so tell me remind me about the apple hat so how did that work out was it cuz you got there early no, it wasn't even an early thing, which is what was crazy. It was my last stop of the day, and I had been to multiple places, and I did pretty well that day. I had, I filled up my the trunk of my my vehicle. You know, I got a bunch of stuff. Nothing like huge profit margins, but I did pretty good. And I was like ready to go home. I was tired, and I was like, you know what? There's like one more place that's like two blocks from here. I'm just gonna go to it. And I was walking around, and I found the hat, and. It was super good deal, fifty cents. I sold it for over a hundred, and um, that just remembering that also helps me to know that there's times when I'm out and it's like, do I really want to go to that last garage sale? Mm-hmm. Remember the highs, right? Like, yeah. I mean, I'm obviously not going to be ridiculous and drive, you know, an extra thirty minutes to go if I'm, you know, giving up family time now. But uh, you know, if it's if it's close, you know, don't be lazy. Go check it out. No, and I get that. I mean, that's kind of what keeps me going, especially on those days where there's nothing early. Like one of my major, and I've talked about this, I don't know how many podcasts ago, but one of my first major FBA scores was an estate sale that was like 9.30 in the morning. It was kind of late. And for whatever reason, no one else had showed up. And when I showed up, and the reason being is because it was kind of like, you know, there's estate sales where there's like you see the huge lines yep. of people. Then there's the one where it's like you show up at a house and you're like, hey, is there an estate sale is this, happening here? Is this the place? The and that's sale? what this was. Yeah. And they took me in the garage and there was all this sealed media. There were all these sealed goods. And I go, yeah, I need it. You know, things might have been bad today, but you never know. Yep. Right. And, and stay motivated. And it keeps you going. Right. It's a score. I definitely believe it's the scores that keep you motivated. Which is I could just see Orlando driving around going, Harley, 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 Harley. Good <laughs> and that Harley. high voice too. No, and, and it, but it, I, I do. I mean, I, I'll never forget. This was in a Harley Hall, but um, there was this one time where it just, you know, I went to this, you know, those garage sales where like no one's there and you're like, why am I here? Mm. Right. And I always try to keep myself motivated because I've had major halls. And one of my major halls was, there was a there was a garage show and this guy had like two um, ten packs of VHS tapes, Sony VHS, which at that time on Amazon were going for a hundred a piece. So I'm there and I'm talking to the guy and I go, "Hey, do you have any more of these?" He goes, "Oh yeah, I used to uh, own a video store. I just can't make this up." So I go, "Really? You own the video store?" And I said, "Oh, so do you have more of these?" He goes, "Sure." So he opens his garage. And I got to tell you, there was at the least 30 10 packs, at the most 50. Wow. Okay. And this was one of those mornings where I didn't want to get up. I didn't want to go to garage sales. You know, you're tired. Sales weren't that great. Amazon was kind of blah. But those tapes, I sold all of those within a month. That's crazy. And you know, that kind of reminds me, it's just like a tip. I mean, I'm, I haven't, I still have yet to make like great connections. Um, I know you talk about like different connections you've made with different people you've gone to garage sales, but um, I, I still kind of kick myself a little bit because I was new to reselling and I didn't do it. Um, but one of my first garage sales was probably like only a month into it. I stopped at this house and the lady had a bunch of like nutrition stuff. Like some of it was expired. Some of it was almost expired like stuff from like a wholesale, Whole Foods type place, right? Okay. Um, and I was asking her like how much the box, then I saw some was expired and some wasn't. And I was in such a rush that I was like, you know, I'm just going to go somewhere else. And she made a comment like, yeah, I'm, I work at the store um, and every so often we like clear out old inventory and get new stuff. And so I just bring a bunch of it home and, and sometimes just throw it away or sell it or give it to people. That would have been a great contact, right? Because if I would have said like, hey, I'm willing to take the stuff that's not expired, of these brands, anytime you have it, here's my card, give me a call. Right? But I didn't make that connection and, uh, you know, it's gone. But uh, in the future, I think like what you said, don't be afraid to ask people, do you have more? Because 
there's a chance there's a story and they're connected somehow to, 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 to more inventory that you can get access to. No, you know what? I probably should have done that connection with this guy because maybe he had more. I just, I think that morning I just didn't want him scanning stuff. Mm-hmm. And so I just filled up my car and I was out. But again, you know, when you're in that low, you got to remember like, you know, especially if this is like your second or third year, right? Those of you that have been doing this for a while, you get it. Like you get that there's going to be a low. You probably prepare. You already have money set aside. You actually have death piles that you purposely hold, you know, and you keep sourcing to plan ahead, knowing that there's going to be a time where it's going to be hard to source. At that point, let's let's not call those death piles. Let's call those um, money piles. Um, what would we call them? Like a assets in inventory storage. What? Uh, what? 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 What are those things like the silos they put grain in in case of like a, a drought? Silos. Yeah, but what are they like? There's a name for like like a, not just a silo, but like if it's like specifically for like in case of it's like in case of an emergency, you know. I, I don't, I don't know. But anyways, that's kind of what it is, right? It's like the the when things are bad, I still have work to do. I agree, I, and I'm not saying just make death piles for the sake of death piles, but. You know, when you're in, let's say you're in that low and you remember that low of, you know, like you said, like you had trouble finding inventory, you know, probably in retrospect. Retrospect? <laughs> it's getting late. Okay? Retrospect. It's getting late. Retrospect. It probably would have been better when things are really hot, like to go sourcing and sourcing and sourcing and sourcing to make sure you didn't have those dry times. Yep. Right? Because I can tell you for myself, like, you know, people have been giving me a hard time about, you know, you keep sourcing, but you keep talking about your death piles. And for me, it's like I know that I need to keep sourcing now because I know when June hits and, and sales are slow, there's going to be like those holiday weekends. There's going to be like Fourth of July. There's going to be Memorial Day. There's going to be, you know, so, and so on. And people are going to go on vacations. So garage sales may not be as much. But, man, if I can score all these garage sales scores now, which have the best ROI, it's better for me to score now and, you know, kind of. I guess strategically plan to list in the summer when things are slow. Yeah, and I think I think part of that too is having a having a realistic set model of my goal is to source X amount and or list X amount and like have have a combined total like I'm going to source 50 items and list 20 items or a combination. So if I can't source 50 then any item I don't source I'm listing, right? So like you have a, a set number like 50, 70, whatever it is, items I'm either going to source or list. And so if sourcing is big, you're sourcing. And if you're not able to source items, then you're listing. So there's always movement happening that week. I agree. I agree. You just got to be ready. I mean, I I think about, you know, with my helper, like she ends up taking lots of pictures and she lists a lot of items on Inkfrog, but I won't activate a lot of them because I'm also doing that. And the reason I won't is because You know, I use those times when, you know, let's say I'm stuck at the DMV or let's say I'm not feeling well or I got to be an appointment. Then I'll use my hotspot on my phone. I'll use Inkfrog and then I'll list during that time. And then all the other stuff, you know, because that's super mobile. The other stuff that, you know, I've taken pictures of and so on, I'll do that at home. Not saying I couldn't do the other one either. It's just I always have something ready. Hmm. Right. So whenever there's that lull, there's that dead time, there's that time I can't do anything. I'm able to be active. Yeah, so I think the key here is don't sit down with your feet up and say, I'm just going to wait until there's a lull before I do work. Always be doing work. Agreed. Always be doing work. Agreed. I mean, discipline. When you're sitting back with your feet up is when, you know, things are, I would say you can enjoy it for a little bit, but just understand that, you know, part of reselling is it's not passive. Like you're going to have to be active. You can take the vacations. I mean, there's people that go on vacation for a month and their store is still selling. It's totally doable. And, uh, hey, we haven't talked about this, changing your handling time. Do you know what that's about? Have you ever done that yet? Um, haven't needed to, but I'm, I'm sure with eBay Open coming up, I might need to. Okay, so just somebody had asked, might as well just talk about it now. So if you ever go on vacation or you're going to go away, we don't recommend ever putting stuff on vacation mode. At least I hope we don't. <laughs> but we say change your handling time and then have a message in a template form to message a buyer as soon as they buy something. Right. So you can change your handling time to 30 days, 25 days, whatever it is. And then as soon as the item sells, I've done this multiple times. You know, when I used to go on those DC trips when I was an administrator, I'd be gone for a week. 
So what I would do is change my handling time. As soon as somebody bought something, I would say, hey, just want to let you know, thank you for your purchase. Uh, but please be aware, you know, I will be unable to ship until I return from this trip or whatever you want to say. Mm -hmm. And, you know, please let me know if this causes an issue. And if you don't hear back from them, then you're good. But uh, just something to think about, you know, because that's another time where, you know, you might be concerned, but we want to help you work through it. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's talk about some practical things. I like practical. Okay. I'm a practical guy. So the first thing I will say is, Diversity is huge when it comes to reselling. Do you agree or disagree? Agree. Agree? Why? Yeah. Okay. I really wanted to give an Anchorman quote, but, you know. You're not going to do it? Okay, I guess not. Okay. Well, I mean, I get the diversity, you know, it's an old wooden ship from the Civil War. Okay. Right? All right thank you. The office needs more diversity. Right. What's diversity? It's an old wooden ship from the Civil War. Okay, okay. But, all right. Ha, ha, ha. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mike. It's getting late. That's all I can say. And I'm out of Diet Dew. And, you know. You started the episode with no Diet Dew. That's true because we had the heater on yeah. and it was so and hot. just <laughs> sucked it back. So, we'll make, so here's the thing. I really think, you know, when I first started, like, I got bored really fast because all I was doing was Harley shirts, Hawaiian shirts, mm. and I don't know what else. I was, like, looking for... Like, uh, I don't know, like these random cool t-shirts, but man, after a while I got bored really quick. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's one nice thing. Diversity, not only does it spice up what you're doing, even with listing, right? Cause you know, listing, listing shoes is the exact same listing shirts. It's kind of, you, you go to, you get into like almost, a. uh, an assembly line type thing, which can be very efficient, but can also be kind of mind numbing. And so doing different things just kind of stimulates your, your mind. Also, it increases <laughs> your, your ability to source more, right? So if you're, if you know shoes and you know, clothes, women's and men's brands, and you know, electronics and you know, kitchen gadgets, and you know, then when you're sourcing, it's less likely to be in, in a low time because there's more to source. I agree. I mean, and that's part of one of the points is, I really, and, and I know people will disagree, and I think there's a time not to do this, but you got to source what you enjoy sourcing. You know, to just pick up items for profit's sake is good. I'm not saying it's bad. I think you should. But if that's all you're ever doing, like, you think about why you got into reselling, right? You want to make some extra money, but some some people, when they get into reselling, like myself, I enjoyed it. Right. So I've always said this, like the reason I don't scale on Amazon to a warehouse level is I don't want to be in a warehouse. Yeah. Like I just don't. That's not I would be bored out of my mind being in a warehouse. Yeah, it'd be nice having a little bit of extra money. But, I, you know, having to be. Listen, I'm pretty sure that, you know, if if it's something you really enjoy doing, you're not going to feel this resentment. And I definitely think in reselling. If you get to the point of resentment with the items that you're picking up, probably time to change, you know, the items you're picking up. Yeah. Or keep picking those up as your bread and butter items, but, but be willing to look for the diversity and, and look for other items, things that are maybe more interesting. Um, I always, I get a little jealous when I see other resellers selling, you know, different video games and comic books and stuff. And it's like, man, I just, I don't find that stuff. And part of it is I'm not looking that hard for it because I'm looking for the profit, right? Like I know which shoes are profitable. Do I like picking up shoes that kind of are stinky and have to like, you know, have you know? You ever, I've never had smelly shoes. Isn't that weird? In, in my years of reselling, I've never had smelly shoes. Have you had a smelly Well, shoes? I don't stick my nose in them, <laughs> okay. you know, but like there's definitely times when I open up a shoe tote and I'm like, yep, that's the shoe tote. Okay. Interesting. I've never had that. Maybe I just didn't have a sense of smell. Maybe. 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 You'd let me know though, right? If, if I didn't smell all right. Well, I mean, you were my boss for a long time, so it would have been very awkward for me to be like, uh, when was the last time you showered? I think your sense of smell might be off. Okay. All right. This is getting late. All right. Before we move forward uh, with the podcast, hey, if you haven't had a chance, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, even after these comments are being made, uh, hit that alert. Also, if you haven't followed us on Instagram, hey, we're always dropping knowledge. There's always, you know, new things happening there. Uh, we have some things coming up pretty soon. We have, uh, we're actually on, a, on another podcast that we're going to be on, and we're actually going to be on another podcast. So stay Whoa. tuned.
and another other one and another another one so so be aware of that you know on instagram we're dropping a lot of this knowledge that we can't drop on on youtube and uh always feel free to give us a call 619-738-1170 at 619-738-1170 you can email us pure podcast at gmail.com and uh we're also on twitter pure so cast facebook pure so podcast instagram pure so podcast and last of all, if you have an opportunity and you really just want to say thank you in a tangible way, there's always that donation uh, link at the bottom just to say, hey, Mike and Rolando, appreciate what you're doing. We would love it if you did some more. Here's just a small token of our appreciation. So yeah, that would be that would be super great. Remember, we got to keep those lights on. <laughs> keep those lights on. Yeah, especially when it's late. Yeah. yeah. So got to we got to look at he doesn't even have Mountain Dew. This is a sad, no, like, we need to start. Don't make this one of those commercials. We need to, like, I, I could see, like, Sarah McLaughlin, like, no, I knew you were the, going there. No, don't. the arms of an angel playing right now. And, like, you can give, like, puppy dog okay, eyes we're not going there. All right. to the camera. Like, Orlando does not have to hate Mountain Dew. I don't think one person would feel sorry. For the cost. One, nor should for the, you. For the cost at of, all. Of, of one cup of coffee a month. You okay. can support. All right. Pure Hustle Podcast. I'm really trying to get us back. Because you know what happens in these episodes? We've had people tell us we ramble. And we're not rambling. I think we're staying on topic. But, you know, we do go like this sometimes. Do people say we ramble? I don't know. I've heard it said. It's all good. I, I got to tell you, I do appreciate our organic podcast. Right? Because we got to do it. Like, if it was always robotic, we'd be bored. Yeah. Like I'd be bored. I'd be bored. Are you bored? No. No, I'm not bored. Okay. Let's because we're, cause we're... We're diversifying. Yeah. That's right. All right. You got to so, do what you love. You do got to do what you love. Now, I will say part of that, not only diversifying, you know, you got to find things you enjoy. Like for myself, I still love, it's weird. I still love Harley shirts. I still love Hawaiian shirts. But the reason is, is because there's so many other items I source. Right. And so when I find those, I'm like, wow, I'm willing to work through those items. I'm willing to source them. I'm willing to take pictures. And you know what I do? The items I don't want to take pictures of, I just give to my helper. I'm not saying that's for everybody, but that's one way I've been able to work through things, right? So I'll take care of listing all the items I really enjoy, and then the ones I don't, I'll pay somebody to do it. Is that okay? Is that feasible? I, I think that's great if you got a helper, but, you know, some of us aren't at that level. No, I know. If you're not at the I have a helper level, um, it's all right. You can you can still uh, power through it. No, you can. I'm 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 in the boat with you. We we got the this. boat of diversity. Yeah, some the old civil war wooden boat. Okay, all right. Now the other thing I will say, and I hope I'm not taking this comment. I want I want to say so sh- so quick. <laughs> I got to be careful how I say that. So quick, ship quick. Uh, I think they said this, like, or somebody else said that. Um, you want to pick a profit and not projects. You know what I'm talking about here. Profits, not projects. Yeah. Do you have projects that you've never taken care of? Are you talking about like my VCRs that I haven't run through? Yeah. Right? But there's profits there too. But they're not motivating you. It's true. Right? You're kind of like, um, I, how long have you had those VCRs? Too long. Okay. And it's probably been like four podcasts since you talked about like you're going to do something with them, wasn't it? Look, man, have you <laughs> have you done all your listenings yet? Okay. <laughs> This is like this is like the pot calling the kettle black right now. No, I know, but again, but that's what happens. Yeah. Like you pick things up, you're not motivated because you don't want to deal with it. So don't pick it up. Yeah, I don't look at VCRs anymore. You don't? Even with a remote? No, that's true. If I saw like a brand new one in box with a remote or like one with a remote, it might it might pique my my interest. But that's the thing. Like I have I have a ton of items right now that I'm like, oh, like I, I think about right now I have bows. I have these old bows, like the iPod ones, mm. like the older iPod that they sell for money, but they're missing remotes. So I'm always like, I'm going to order remotes. And I remember looking up remotes. I was going to order them and they cost too much. So I'm like, oh, I'll get to it. So now I have all these items that I'm not motivated to work with them. I probably shouldn't have picked them up. Because even though they're going to make me profit, they're a project. They're probably not going to make me a profit. So don't pick up projects. Unless you just need that for your hobby, right? Like if you like tinkering with stuff and it's like, this might eventually, you know. But it's, again, something you enjoy. Yeah, that's right. right? We're talking about staying motivated in the grind, right? So if it's only about profit, you're going to have a hard time. Now, if profit is such a motivator that you can do things, then go for it. 
I don't know. Do you find that profits your main, like not your main, but is able to make you move past a lot of things? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> I think it needs to. Yeah. But there's another part of it that you, you, I don't know. I just, I've been reselling for a while and I will tell you that I've gotten better about just picking up things I care about. Yeah. I think that's part of it. And, and, and and that goes against 100% what I was about ready to say, but um, I know we might offend some people who who um, you know listen to our stuff by saying this, but but you know I don't I don't resell I don't go to thrift stores and garage sales because I just love the experience of that. I think there are times when I love being at garage sales and thrift stores, but the main reason I do it is the profit. Hundred percent. Right? Like it's, it, 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 it's the profit. There's nothing wrong in saying that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know there's some people who are like, you know, they just. They kind of love it's about the, the process. Yeah. Right. But, but for me, it's like, you know, there's something cool about being part of like a community that's like recycling things and giving new homes to oh, things. I but see like what, you're going here. what, what drives me more than that is my family. Right. Yeah. And, but I think that's okay. It's kind of like a, I'm going to do a, a, a quote of the week here. Whoa. Okay. Um, but you know, the key thing is, it's kind of like you got to look your quote up. <laughs> Mine are all just in here. I am not that good. All right, but you know, Adam Smith years ago, capitalist, right? Wealth of Nations. He had this quote, which which has always stuck to me, right? And he says, "It is not from the benevolence of the butcher, the brewer, or the baker that we expect our dinner, but from their regard to their own interests." Hmm. Right, and I, and it's exactly what you're saying. Right, like when you go to McDonald's, like people aren't putting together your your. If, if you ever go to McDonald's, mm. you're not the McDonald's guy. Yeah, I was gonna say you pick McDonald's of all places. Well, I don't know, it's easy, but because McDonald's, like most, and I don't say most, but I know a lot of people that worked at McDonald's and they didn't work at McDonald's because they cared about McDonald's. It wasn't like we're gonna expand the Golden Arches. Yeah. Right. It was like they got to make that paycheck. So when they make that, and, and just go with me here, okay? So I'm not saying it's delicious. I I like Big Macs, but. Not everyone does. But when they're making that Big Mac and it's really good, they didn't make it because they're like, hey, Mike's in the house. We're going to make a good Big Mac for him. No, they made that because they want that paycheck. Yep. Right? That ultimately is their interest. And you get to benefit from that. And I think that's the beautiful thing about about this is, is like, I mean, I heard it once said, like, you know, thinking about, like, the multi-billionaires, like, that that made um, all these techs, tech companies that we enjoy today, Apple, Microsoft, right? Um, we all, our lives are better because of it, right? They just are. Like the fact that we have all this technology, our life is better. And and they might have wanted to make everyone's life better, but their primary motivation was money. And because they were able to seek that motivation, everybody's life gets better. Like nobody gets rich off of not making other people's lives better. And so if I can make money by making other people's lives better by reselling, that's great. But my reason for it is I want to make my family's life better. That's my number one reason. 100%. So, and again, it, maybe that's part of the remembering the highs or it's part of like doing... The motivation, right? Well, long-term motivation. motivation. Yeah, long-term, thinking about the macro. All right, now, I will say, and this is something I, I've been saying for a long time, is make sure you're selling for higher ROI and not to work in a sweatshop. That's true. I, I, I can't hit home more on that. I, I think if we could get every reseller on board with that, I think there'd be a happier reselling community. Yeah. It's yeah. Just, and there's been quite a few things where we've sold where it's like, well, we made $2 on that item. And by the time we bought it, took pictures, listed it, shipped it, Printed the package, to, drove to the UPS store. It was, it was a sweatshop. Yeah, it, it's really hard to stay motivated when, you know, you're spending, I don't know, let's say that took 20 minutes to make $2. Yep. All right, because if you multiply that out, you're making $6 an hour. Like, wow, like that's worse than your regular job. Yep. Right? So that goes into, okay, how do you stay motivated in the grind? Make sure you're sourcing, and it's going to take time, right? We talk about the pipeline, but make sure you're sourcing items that will bring you higher, higher ROI, right? Because listing something that costs $10 or that will sell for $10 and listing something that will sell for 100 is the exact same. Yep. I mean, it depends, you know, if it's a turntable or a T-shirt. Right. But again, you got to think about what motivates you, right? 
you had talked about a few podcasts. What was the thing that I thought you really weren't into? And then you're kind of like, I don't know anymore. Do you remember that conversation? Remember we we're talking about speakers, right? You were all about speakers when you first started. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I love vintage audio. I've always, well, I'm not like an, an audio file anymore. When I was in high school, um, you know, you're a high school kid with your own room and I would go to thrift stores and garage sales and I had friends and I was a part of a forum and I had just tons of vintage audio stuff and I would like change things around, listen to different speakers. So it was really neat. I've, I've been able to pick up a couple of receivers and some cool speakers that are set up in my garage, which is where we do all of our reselling stuff. Um, but trying to like sell that stuff, is kind of a nightmare. Like it's kind of fun to collect, but I, I'm, don't want to get into collecting again. And it's not as exciting for me to, to buy because it's hard to ship. It's hard to sell. It's hard to test, you know? And it takes a lot of time. Like I will tell you, I just picked up a set of Bose speakers for 150 that I'll be able to sell the speakers for 550, the equalizer for 300 and the center channel speaker for another 200. Oof. So for me, like, yeah, it's going to take a little work, but I don't feel like it's a sweatshop. Right. Right. But if I picked up, let's say some lower end, Sony speakers, right? I got to test it. I got to pack it. I got to ship it. And I only do it for $50. Like if I put my time out, you know, and I do the math, you know, to, to spend, you know, an hour or two to make, you know, $20 profit, probably not worth my time. So if you, you find yourself in that grind, you got to take a look at what you're sourcing. You got to take a look at, you know, how much money are actually are you making? I'm not saying... You got to make lawyer money. It's nice when you make that three to four hundred dollars an hour reselling. It's not always going to be like that, but you know it's nice when it does because it'll keep you motivated. Mm -hmm. So don't have that because that happens. I find that a lot, and I'm not speaking directly to Mike, but you know there's a lot of people that do pallets, and you got to be careful with pallets because if you buy certain pallets, you may think that you know you're saving time by buying that pallet and listing these items, but you could be doing a sweatshop mentality thing without knowing it because you're spending all that time listing that item just to make a few bucks on it. Where you may have been better off going to some thrift stores, going to a garage sale, or maybe, you know, finding a different company that has higher price ROI. Yep. Just something to think about. Very true. All right. And what about connecting with the other reason? I think that definitely helps. Yeah. And I'm sure you can speak to that even more than I can because... I mean, one, I only got into reselling because I was connected to a reseller, right? So that's part of it. It motivated you. It did. No, it motivated me for sure. Uh, but when you're doing it full time the way you're doing it, like I hear you talk about it all the time. It's it's the fact that you're so active on Instagram. It's the fact that we're doing this podcast. It's the fact that you're meeting other resellers. We're recording this before our meetup, um, but by the time it, it airs, we've had our meetup, right? So we got to connect with a bunch of the people who listen to Pure Hustle podcasts and, and, and resell and, and those connections keep you going because you see that you're not the only one that has downtimes and you get to hear other people's exciting stories and you get to get the bolos and the hustles and things that are going to help move your game forward. Agreed. Agreed. I, and you know, I'm full time, so it's, it's easy for me to get into you know, this stage in the in the grind of reselling where I'm like, oh, like this is worthless, this is pointless, like I'm just working to make money. That's all I'm ever doing. But I got to tell you, like these trips, like, you know, going up to L.A., uh, you know, I have a trip planned. I'm going to be going to Illinois. I'm going to be going to Washington. I'm going to be going uh, to Iowa. Like I'm traveling and I'm going to be doing some reselling. And in the summer, I'm still up in the air, but I have another big trip planned and it keeps me motivated. Right. Like you get tired of seeing the same thrift stores. You get tired of seeing the same neighborhoods of garage sales. But if you're able to expand, that helps. And, you know, this meetup, like hearing other resellers and their success stories. And then on top of that, getting tips about things you never heard about will definitely keep you motivated. Right. So if you're not I know a lot of our listeners don't have an IG account. I encourage you just get on there just to watch, just to see other people, just to stay motivated. <laughs> I know there's a lot of drama on Instagram, but I would say the positives and all the good things that come out of there are definitely worth your time. Yeah. And I'd also love to see, um, especially if you're, you're watching on YouTube, I'd love to see the comment section uh, continue to grow because there's been so much uh, 
just advice that has come through the comment section of other people giving us like, Hey, have you heard of this company? Have you tried this? Here's how we do things. Um, and then people will respond on that. And then it creates almost this thread. And so it's, it's cool to see how our show and a talking point in the show leads to another discussion that we might not even be a part of, but our, our listeners are able to, to talk about things and give each other advice. And so I'd love to see, you know, the comment section even used more. So, so if you're, if you're struggling with a way to connect Instagram, following us on Instagram is a great way. Also just jump on, on YouTube and and leave a comment, ask a question. If if, we will always answer all of the comments up to a point, obviously, I mean, if we ever get to We try, if you notice, we, I think we've answered almost every single one. I think so. Um, but you know, we'll probably answer really, you know, in a timely fashion, but also, um, other listeners are answering questions and talking and giving advice, things that we didn't even think about. So um, it's such a cool place to connect and get more more information. So if you haven't already subscribed, subscribe, hit like. The more likes we get, the more subscriptions we have, um, the bigger this community grows and the more you'll be connected. Agreed. And and definitely reach out to people. You know, I, I think about, it's funny because, you know, before when I was an administrator, my circle of friends with was Mike and everybody I worked with. Right now, I have like another separate reselling kind of circle of friends and it's all melding together, but it's kept me motivated. Like, you know, meeting with other resellers, like I talked about the last podcast, meeting with uh, Christian and Adam from Latin Pickers and seeing how they do books and so on. It really motivated me going, you know what? There are people that really are making this happen on the next level. Right. Meeting with, you know, uh, people that we talked with you know, or we're going to talk with at the meetup. And I know some of them, you know, through Instagram, but meeting them in person and hearing their successes will motivate me and go, you know what? This is definitely doable. It's kind of like our podcast. You just talked about this. Right. If we never heard from any of you and we never had you saying, hey, Mike and Orlando, thank you so much for dropping this knowledge. It's changed my life. I've been able to make a few hundred more uh, a week. I've been able to go full time. Like we wouldn't have a lot of motivation, right? We, we'd we be stuck, but it's what keeps us motivated to keep doing more, right? So you got to do that. Okay. So I got another point here. You know, I, I kind of, I, I phrase it here. Like you need to create a reselling space. So let me explain this a little bit. I think it's physical and I think it's mental. <laughs> well, this is the psychological, uh, and philosophical episode. Uh, but these usually are, right? Are, are, is it, this an even, yeah, it's an even episode. So our even episode. Well, it, it, ch- it changed at one point. The even episodes were the update episodes. So it's the, the non-update episode. There you go. The non-update. But, you know, the, the easy one is if you're living with your inventory, stop. <laughs> I know it's hard to do. And, I, you know, I live, you know, Mike and I, we live in San Diego. So, and we're, we're not, you know, loaded by any means. So we're limited on space, but, you know, I find that I'm the least motivated when I have stuff in my living room, in my kitchen, in my bedroom, and and everywhere, because I look at all this stuff and I'm like, oh, like, I don't even want to deal with this. But when I keep keep stuff in the storage unit, when I list it right away, when I keep it away and and I have my own space where I can do non-reselling things, I feel a lot motivated, like, when I go into my reselling space. Yeah. And having it organized soon, everybody has different organizational strategies and ways of doing things. And some, some people's organization seems, you know, like it's unorganized, but to them it makes sense and it works. But, um, a a prominent psychologist I was listening to was talking about, uh, was talking about this idea of, of like chaos. And if you've got a stack of papers and you know, in that stack of papers, you got some bills and you got some things you got to answer, you don't want to, and you got, and it, and it just keeps stacking up and you let it sit in the room your whole life, there's like a cloud over your life because inside, inside of that is just chaos. Right. And, and when you, I even see it, like when I walk into my classroom, I try really hard before I leave during the, no matter how busy my day was to completely clear off my desk of everything, to put everything away. So when I walk in the next day, everything is clean. There's times though, when I just have to leave my classroom and things are a mess from the day before. And I come in (laughs) and it's, it feels like chaos, right? Like things aren't, orderly, it's not organized. And I think just like you said, if you've got a place and things are put in the right place, then it's order. It's not chaos. You're not like, uh, because that cloud, it, it affects other aspects of your life. It's not just that thing. So yeah, I think having, having a place 
where you do your listing or or a place that you store things and a way you set up when when you're doing pictures and then you put it away, it helps prevent just that cloud over your life. 100%. I will now say, I think mentally you need to create that space. Yep. Right? Because what happens, and we talk about that reselling is a lifestyle and we 100% agree it's a lifestyle. I think even as a hobby, it's still a lifestyle because, you know, you get offers throughout the day, you get messages, not like you can just put them on autopilot and not tend to it. Even if you do private label, even if you do FBA, you still got to tend to things. But you got to take those opportunities to just disconnect. Uh, you know, it's so funny because Mike and I talk a lot about reinvesting your business, right, over. But there's also a time where you got to take that those profits and you got to do something great with it. You know, for me, it's spending time with my boys, taking them out of state, taking them, you know, to a place they've never been to, you know, and just disconnecting, mm -hmm. right? And disconnect to a point that, you know, when you get back, you're so hungry to get back into it, right? It's kind of like when I was a, a teacher, I was so ready for school to be over towards the end. Yep. But then, you know, come August, I'm like, oh, I can't wait to get back in the classroom. Yep. And I think reselling can be like that, too. Like, you're constantly on the grind, you're constantly on the grind, and there's no break. But what if you took, and you know, you make sure you grind like crazy before you go on that break, but you take that break, and yeah, you still get sales and you still tend to it, but you take that break, you know, to the point where, man, when you're back, you're motivated. You're yep. re ready to get back in that grind. Yeah, and I, I may have mentioned this already on a podcast before. I feel like I have. I I. I I know I've told somebody this, but again, another thing I heard somebody say, and the reason I always give quotes and other people is, is I'm not an authority figure, right? Like I don't, I don't have great stuff coming you from. You know yourself, but I, I get where you're coming from. But, but this concept of treat yourself like you are an employee that you're responsible for, right? And so if I'm an employee and I've got a boss, like there's certain things you expect. You do a job well done and you expect to be acknowledged. You expect for them to treat you well and to... And so if you're your own employee and you're your own boss, if you're both of those things in one, then you do deserve not to say like always treat yourself, but, you know, treat yourself like an, an employee. Your employee does a job, a good job. You're going to reward them. You're going to give them something, you know, you're going to. And so if you're treating yourself that way, realistically, there's going to be times when you spend a little bit of extra, you get a bonus, you get some time off, you, you know, you get a little bit of leeway because you're a hardworking employee and you know, sometimes you just need a day to call out. Yeah, and I'm not saying that's for everybody. You know, you, you if you follow Gary Vee, you hear Gary Vee say that throughout his 20s, he never went on a vacation and never had a weekend off. I don't know if it was like every, but there's some people that can, can function like that. I think I can function like that a lot, but I do have my point where I need to disconnect or it's going to be a grind that I'm not motivated. And then I'm going to start questioning, like, why am I still doing this? Yep. Right. So it, it doesn't it doesn't hurt. You just you got to hit, you know, the listings and the pictures and the sourcing really hard before you do it. I definitely would say, you know, make sure you kind of position it in a way that it's not going to hurt your business. But once you're ready to do it, disconnect so you can eventually, you know, I guess subconsciously develop that hunger to get back into the game. Yep. So. I know we covered a lot of topics, you know, and I know the conversation went here and there, but I hope that in this podcast, we're able to motivate you if you're new that, hey, there's going to be these patterns. And those of you that are experienced, hopefully you're able to relate to some of these and maybe it brings you back to a place to go, okay, I know what I need to do to keep staying motivated in the grind and keep moving. You missed one now. What did I miss? Like probably one of the most important ones. What is that? Listen to Pure Hustle Podcast. When you're struggling on motivation... <laughs> Hit the like button, subscribe, listen to Pure Hustle Podcast, um, and, and you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully that helps keep you motivated. And there you go. So with that being said, make sure to be real. Be relevant. And be reselling. Peace. Peace.